Hello, I'm Matthew Tesh, one of the co-founders of Heavy Robotics. In this video, I'll be exploring a little about the Jacobian matrix for a robot. The definition of the Jacobian is the derivative of the robot kinematics with respect to the joint angles for that robot. At first, this may not seem that useful. However, the Jacobian matrix is surprisingly powerful and at the basis of many advanced control techniques. In particular, the Jacobian can be used to relate joint velocities to world frame velocities, so to determine how to move your joints to move it the end of your robot in a certain direction, at a certain speed. Also, it can relate joint torques to world frame forces and torques, so determining how much torque to apply to your joints to apply a force and or a moment in the world. And it is useful when computing the inverse kinematics. This problem involves figuring out what the joint angles must be to reach a given position in space with your robot. So while forward kinematics amounts to plugging some numbers into an equation, inverse kinematics usually involves optimization, and the solutions are generally much more involved. So at the end of the day, kinematics are used to tell what your robot is doing, but the Jacobian is used when telling your robot to do something useful. Recall that robot kinematics define the position and orientation of a frame of interest as a function of joint angles. To find the Jacobian, you need to take the derivative of this expression with respect to the theta vector, where theta are your robot joint angles. We won't go into detail here regarding the computation, but the minimum representation of the kinematics is just six numbers three position and three orientation values. Let's say x, y, z, rx, ry, rz. We take the derivative of each of these with respect to each value in the theta vector. So the first set of derivatives would be dx d theta 1, dy d theta 1, dz d theta 1, etc. So this results in six rows. We now continue with the other robot joint angles and get a result of a six by n matrix, where n is the number of joint angles in your system. This is the Jacobian matrix. Now feel free to pause here and let this method sink in. This is a huge important concept. Also, another thing that is important to understand and can be a little unintuitive is that this matrix is just for a single frame of the robot at a single set of joint angles. If you move the robot a bit, you get a different Jacobian. If you care about the center of mass of the first link instead of the origin of the end effector, that's another Jacobian. This means you may find yourself dealing with an array of these Jacobian matrices, one for each frame along the robot arm, or in some situations, just a single Jacobian matrix at each timestamp if reasoning about the end effector alone. Finally, we should note that to compute this, you can take an analytic derivative, but we found that numeric solutions here are much easier to write and debug. Computers are fast, so take advantage of that fact. Now that we have found out how to compute this, although you can usually get this value from a kinematics packaging that you're using instead of redriving it yourself, let's discuss how to use it. From its definition, the Jacobian relates changes to a robot frame in Cartesian space, so dx, dy, dz, etc., to joint velocities, so d theta 1, d theta 2, etc. So the first relation should follow relatively naturally. The velocity in the world, both in direction and orientation equals the Jacobian times the derivative of your joint angles. Now, you may only care about some components in here, so you might only care about Cartesian translation instead of orientation. And so you can just use the rows that you want from the Jacobian. Sometimes you don't need all six rows. Of course, you often want to know what joint angle velocities to command to affect a certain velocity in the world of your system. So often you'll see this inverted as the derivative of your joint angles equals the inverse of the Jacobian times that world velocity vector. Now note that this inverse may not exist. Your, your Jacobian matrix may not be square because six by n, if n is not six, or if you're using a different number of, of um, degrees of freedom that you care about in the world, um, your system may be over or under constrained. For example, if your robot has less than six degrees of freedom or is in a singular configuration, then you cannot command every possible velocity of position and orientation in the world. In such cases, you can use something called the pseudo-inverse. This is a matrix which acts like the inverse for many purposes. It returns the closest solution in the case of over-constrained solutions and the least energy solution or kind of the best possible solution in the case of under-constrained systems. Finally, one of the less intuitive but extremely powerful uses of the Jacobian is to relate joint torques to forces and torques in the world. Now we won't go through the derivation here, but the magic expression you end up with is tau, or joint torques, equals the transpose of the Jacobian times 
the forces in the world, or your moments in the world. Using this expression, you can determine the joint torques which result in any given force or moment applied in any direction in any frame of the robot. So let's see an example of how this can be used. So first we'll demonstrate the calculation of the joint re torques required to hold the arm in the air, effectively canceling gravity. Note that we're not going to do this by commanding the robot to the given position that it's at, but instead we're going to apply torques to the joints that should oppose the forces of gravity. So intuitively, we know that gravity applies a downward force at the center of mass of each link in the robot. And therefore, the frames that we are interested in calculating the Jacobian at here are the center of mass for each link. Now we want to generate a force equal and opposite of gravity in each of these frames. Recalling our Jacobian force-torque relationship, we can compute these joint torques required by multiplying the transpose of the Jacobian for each frame by the corresponding force at that frame. In this video, we demonstrate the application of these torques to compensate for the weight of the arm. The arm is weightless and very easy to move around when these torques are applied. Because the kinematic equations used to calculate the Jacobian are parameterized by the joint angles of the robot, we are calculating a new robot or a new Jacobian to the center of mass of each link at each one of these time steps. And we're calculating the torque to apply from these values, just multiplying J transpose times force in each frame. Finally, you can see when the controller is shut off, the arm no longer supports its own weight. Another demonstration using very similar techniques is the idea of a virtual spring. Suppose you want the tip of the arm to always kind of be pulled towards a point in space. One method to achieve this is to apply forces to the robot as if pulled by an imaginary spring. T to create this force, we consider the Jacobian in the frame of the end effector. We multiply its transpose by the desired force to obtain the required joint torques. In this video, we demonstrate the application of this virtual spring code. Note that the tip of the robot is being pulled towards the single point in space. This demonstration actually builds on the previous demonstration as well. Since torques and forces sum, we can simply add in the torques required to counteract the force of the gravity on the links to the ones used to calculate the virtual spring. This makes the virtual spring behavior much clearer here as it does not need to fight the mass of the arm itself to kind of lift it up. Now this is only the tip of the iceberg. You can do many more complex things with these techniques as well. You can add virtual walls, constraints in Cartesian space, etc. And we'll discuss this a little more in a later video on impedance control. So in summary, the Jacobian is the derivative of the kinematics expression that describes a particular frame of the robot with respect to its joint angles. This matrix is extremely useful and is used to relate velocities and forces between the robot's joints and the Cartesian space that the robot lives in. Finally, it can be used for solving inverse kinematics optimization problems as well. You will encounter this matrix frequently in robot control problems. Finally, just to touch on some bits that we'd emphasize to help you if you're just starting out. First, like most math problems, always sanity check your results if you're writing code to calculate the matrix yourself. Place the robot in joint angle configurations that you can reason about easily, such as all zeros, and check that using the Jacobian produces reasonable velocities and torques at these configurations. And last but not least, although there can be more numerical instability in calculating the, the Jacobian numerically than when dealing with forward kinematics, we still recommend using a numeric differentiation approach instead of analytically deriving the full analytic kinematics expression and then taking the derivative of that. Now, thank you for listening. I hope this brief overview on Jacobian matrices and robotics helped clarify some concepts. There are many more resources out there that go into much more detail on these topics as well. Thank you.